before you answer the question, congratulations. Uh, the way you handled Buffy Revere in that hotel was thanks. masterful. Thanks. Well, no, no, don't get sick of me about it, Jimmy. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I told you I'd take care of the problem, didn't I? Yeah. I want to know how you took care of the problem. Well, yeah. What'd you do? Take her for a ride? Dump her out of a speeding car? Take her for a ride? Dump her out of a speeding car? Me? Do that to a nice lady like Mrs. Revere? Okay. So what'd you do? I took her for a ride and dumped her out of a speeding car, left her at roadside, and then drove off into the... Uh, I had to do something quick, right? <clears throat> so I, I didn't want her to go up into the suite and find Johnny with that uh, Whitney Fox. Yeah, you did a good job of so, that. So, I told her that Johnny wasn't staying in the hotel anymore. I told her that his old war wound was acting up, and he went back to my place. And then I told her I'd take her there. Did you? A man of my word, aren't I? <laughs> Smiley. I've never seen your apartment, but I'm fairly sure it's not exactly one of our luxury models. <laughs> well, let me just say this. It's so bad. I'm talking shabby. I haven't even made up the bed since I moved into the place. Oh, she must have loved it. Well, she didn't seem to mind it too much because that's where she is right now. She's sleeping in my bed. Making up that bed may be the smartest move I ever made. That's right, because I told her that he had been in it. You know, it looked like he just left. I thought he was supposed so, to be sick. But I looked at the bed and I said, that dummy. I mean, I knew I shouldn't have left him alone, because whether he's sick or not sick, he'll just get up and wander off somewhere to some nearby bar. That was brilliant, but how did you explain your presence over at that hotel? Well, I, I told her that Johnny had asked me to go by and pick up his clothes. Was that using oh, the old... sex appeal. How did you get her to stay the night? I'm trying to tell you, Jimmy. Then I said, we better go out and look for him. So I took her to this corner bar, you know, to ask about Johnny. And I said that we better drink, you know, wherever we go. Because you can't walk into these places, you know, and just ask questions and not have anything. You know, they, they don't understand that kind of thing, <laughs> So right? you got Buffy Rubio so, drunk. Well, there's some people who just can't hold their liquor. <laughs> I mean, she, <laughs> by the time we got to the fourth place, she was blind. I mean, she couldn't stand up. So you took her home to sleep it off. Yeah, it's you spending the rest of the night. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what's going on? The whole thing is going like clockwork. Is it? Is yeah. It's terrific. Hector called five minutes ago, and they did the, the shooting scene exactly the way we rehearsed it. Oh, I wish I could have seen that. We should have put that on videotape. Why don't we think of that? Smiley, you can't do everything. <sighs> That's great. What about Calvin Stoner? Did he yeah. make the arrest? Raven Whitney is now over in the jailhouse being booked for the shooting of Jinx Avery. That's perfect. 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 Here's your coat, Jinx. I brought it up from the bar downstairs. Oh, thank you. Hey, are you sure you're all right? I mean, I was getting worried about you. Yes, yes, I'm all right. I, I think it was just a nervous reaction. I mean, I'm not used to getting shot and killed every day. I know exactly what you mean. You know, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it through this whole mess either. Oh, you really convinced me. You gave a very realistic performance. Me? You're the one that gave the performance. You're incredible, Jinx. I mean, why do you think I acted so scared? I almost believed you were really going to shoot me. Oh, well, I was so weak, I doubt I could have really pulled the trigger. Well, you pulled it in the end, and that's all that counts. No, but I didn't really. I mean, Raven Whitney actually got her finger around the trigger. I mean, it, it worked out better than we'd planned. Really? Wow. You know what was the best part? was afterward, when you played dead, you looked so real. Oh, well, that's probably because, um, I don't, um, I don't feel very well tonight. I think I'm getting a little virus. Well, I think I'm gonna go now. Are you sure you don't want to rest a while? No, no, I'm gonna, um, go visit Derek at the hospital, even though he, it's, uh, not legal. What do you mean? Oh, you see, he's at the hospital, and, and visiting hours are over, so he's gonna have to pull some strings. I see. Well, look, I hope that this, um, 
charade pays off for all of you guys tonight. Hey, listen, Jinx, you're part of this, too. I mean, if we can convince Raven Whitney to give us our theater back, we can do our play, and you can have your starring role back. Well, I don't, um... I, I think it's a little late for that now. Uh, good night. tonight. Wait a minute, is this just my imagination? Or do I hear someone? I'm just being foolish. But I'm not going to be able to sleep unless I call. Monticello Police. Hello, this is Valerie Bryson. Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? Well, I hope so. You see, I've been hearing some very strange noises outside my doorway all night long. All right, uh, why don't we start with your name and address, ma'am? Miss Bryson. Valerie Bryson. Bryson. Valerie. Hal, let me take all that. Right. Sure. Valerie, this is Damian Tyler. Oh, how nice to hear a friendly voice. I don't feel so bad about being an hysterical female. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, these noises in my hallway. I don't know what it is, and I should go out and investigate, but I'd really rather not. However, I don't want to waste the good time of the police department. Hey, hey, it's all right. It's our job. Look, uh, I'm off duty. I'm going to come over and check it out for you, all right? Oh, that would be wonderful. And uh, I'll ring your doorbell and give you a report on my findings. Oh, thank you, Damien. I really appreciate this, even if it turns out just to be a stray cat or something. It's okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Probably is just a stray cat. Yeah, Helen, Helen, what happened? Yeah, yeah, what was it like when you walked into the penthouse? Well, it was real, all right. It was all too real, as a matter of fact. Hey, I mean, nothing went wrong, did it? I mean, there were blanks in that guy. Oh, yeah, no, no, nothing like that. I mean... Jinx had all that phony blood all over, and she was lying there on the carpet. Johnny, Johnny was as white as a sheet, and Raven's complexion wasn't much better either. Hey, sounds attractive. Yeah, it was so real. For a while, I didn't know whether to call headquarters or this phony joint. Oh, if it fooled a pro like you, I'm sure it's going to fool Raven. So what are they going to do after they fingerprint her and everything? Well, they're going to put her in the jail cell and hold her there until her attorney arrives. Well, <clears throat> that's my job. Wait. Better hang around. I mean, she'll get suspicious if I uh, appear in only 15 minutes. <laughs> it's gonna work, isn't it, Calvin? I mean, she's bound to get the message, don't you think? Yeah, well, I hope so. If it doesn't, we've gone to a whole lot of trouble for nothing. Hey, hey, cut that sympathy stuff, all right? Remember what she did to you and Dee Dee? Hey, what did she do? Uh, nothing. Yeah, just, just skip it. Look, um, can I uh, make an outside call on this phone? No, just an intercom. Uh... I wanted to call the penthouse, check on Jinx. I thought you said everything was all right. Yeah, she's she's fine, but uh, I don't know. She looked so pale when I saw her. You know, for a minute I thought something had actually gone wrong. I mean, she actually looked dead. Don't move a muscle, copper. It's a raid. Hi, how you doing? You changed your hair. Yeah. Well, I see you got through the barricade all right. Well, yes. What good is it to be a police chief's fiancé if you can't pull a few strings? Well, maybe I can work it out so that you can move in here and stay 24 hours a day. You know I <laughs> I heal twice as fast when you're around. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing? I mean, is the pain better? Pain? Mm. Pain? Pain? What pain? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh. You don't... You don't feel well. Oh, look, let's not um, turn the tables here. Uh, 
I came to visit you, remember? No, honey, you look like you ought to sit down. Come on. You're everything about each other from now on. All right. It's true. I did start feeling badly. I started getting dizzy a couple of hours ago. Just like I felt when I first went to see Miles. You should have gone right home tonight. You need the rest. Tara, do you think it's beginning to happen? Come on, stop that. Don't start jumping to conclusions. Yeah, but it could be starting to happen. I mean, Miles didn't guarantee how much time there'd be. And Miles didn't make you your own physician, so don't start diagnosing yourself. Oh, Derek. Oh, I'm so scared. Come on. Man. I'm really scared that there's not going to be enough time for both of us. I'm scared that this has happened too late. There'll be enough time. I swear there will be. Honey, whatever time there is, that'll be enough for us. I, mean, I know it. I feel it. Just like I feel in my arm that it's going to rain tomorrow. You'll see. Poor baby. Oh, who knows? Maybe a whole lifetime ahead of you. I mean, doctors aren't gods. They can be wrong. There are exceptions. There's exceptions to everything. Yeah, maybe you're right. You know something, honey? What? I'm getting very sick of this place. I'm getting depressed in this hospital. I'm feeling a lot better, so much so that I'm going to check out here tomorrow. Well, no, you do, you can't do that without the doctor's okay. I can get a doctor's okay. If I can fix a ticket, I can get that. That's no problem. Now, they don't need to pamper me anymore. They can give this bed to somebody who really needs it. Well, please, I don't want you to rush it. I'm going to hurry. I got things to do. I got a girl to marry. That's just what I'm going to do. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. If I can do it at all tomorrow, I will. If not, the next day, I'm that's one promise I'm going to keep. Ziggy, Willie, Charlie, thanks. You guys are terrific. In fact, I think I ought to forget this acting bit and think about joining the force. Huh? <laughs> Maybe we will one day. Hey, what do we do with these uniforms? Huh? Oh, I'll take them over to Jim Diedrichson at the studio. I hope you guys took good care of those things. I'm responsible for any damage. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. Do you believe this is the first time anybody's actually paid me for acting? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, incidentally, uh, anybody ask you about this, this place never existed, all right? Sure, Smiley. We won't spoil the joke. Okay, terrific. Don't tell nobody nothing. No problem. Well, that's a double negative. Don't tell anybody anything. That's it. All right. Maybe she put on some makeup to make her look so white. Yeah, well, it didn't look Smiley, like Smiley, what are you doing here? I'm taking care of business. That's what I'm doing here. What am I doing here? Where's Hatcher? <laughs> he went out to buy us something to eat <clears throat> while well, I paid off the squad. Smiley, are you what? sure those guys aren't going to say anything? Are you kidding? They were so grateful, so thrilled over that $50, that easy money. They'll jump off the Monticello Bridge if I ask them to. More of Sid's money. <sighs> and we had to keep it authentic. I said everything had to look real and be real. Yeah, well, real certainly turned out to be the deal. I just hope uh, it isn't too authentic. Well, you're the most authentic thing about this whole scam, Calvin. Let's say we had a real live, genuine police detective. Well, I'm a real live, genuine lawyer. Yeah, that's right. You know, and I think you ought to be down at the cell talking to your client. Right, of course. Well, wish me luck. Hey, break a leg. Well, there isn't much left for me to go around here. I guess I might as well head on out, too. Okay, okay Calvin, thanks. Thank you. You really, you really did us a big favor. Yeah, yeah sure. Look, uh, Smiley, there's a favor you could do for me now. Whatever, whatever you want. Just uh, don't let this thing drag out too long or go too far. I mean, a joke's a joke, but enough's also enough. Well, what are you worried about, Calvin? I promise you, it'll never turn into anything nasty. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, when are you going to tell Raven that it's a gag? Tomorrow. Until tomorrow, I want her to spend a night in jail. I want her to know what it's like to spend one night in jail. Mm. Night in jail? I don't know if I like that. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to be there. You? Yeah, I'm going to be right next to her. That's the plan. Yeah, the next thing on the plan is a preliminary hearing before a judge. You really think it's necessary to go through all of that? Uh -huh. I want her to know. I want her to know what it's like to suffer, just like... Gavin did. Well, then who is going to tell her? Judge, well, 
And here comes the judge. Valerie, uh, I checked the building out as thoroughly as I could, but uh, there are eight floors in this building and a lot of hallways, and they all have nooks and crannies. I can't promise you that there wasn't somebody out there. Please, Damien, don't worry about it anymore. You know, after I called you, I felt sort of foolish. I'm sure that the noise I heard was just the wind. You know, on a windy day, it sounds like a hurricane out in that stairwell. I can imagine. Well, you seem to have strong locks. Just keep them secured and don't let any strangers in. I think you'll be okay. I'm sure I'll be okay. Right. I'm just sorry I bothered you. You must get calls like that all the time. Hey, it's no problem. Look, I was just dropping by the office on my way home, and I only live a few blocks from here. Well, how would you like to stay and have a cup of tea? It's not much of a reward, but... Sure, why not? Okay, I'll start some water. Okay. Um... You know, I'd also like to say that I'm especially nervous because of a strange woman caller that I've had. What strange woman? Her name is Libby Webster, and the only thing I know about her is that she used to know Skylar Whitney. Hey, that touches a nerve. Why didn't you call the police about that? Well, I told my car about it, but there wasn't a crime to report. She's just been overly curious. I've been pretty curious about Skylar Whitney myself. I know about what happened in Switzerland, of course. Which reminds me... I'd like to show you something. This is a picture that Jim Diedrichson took outside the Whitney Theater. Does that face look familiar to you? Sure, it looks like Skylar Whitney. But it isn't Sky. It's just someone who looks like him. How do you know? Because Jim took that picture after his death. I don't believe in ghosts. Hey, I don't either, and I can guarantee that Skylar Whitney is dead because I brought his body back from Switzerland myself. And his widow. Well, these holiday relationships can be very intensive. Well, I think that's a very good word. I met him the first day that I was there, and I saw him every day after that. And then you never saw him again until you came back to Monticello. That's right. Three years later, and he was about to get married. How did you feel about that? Well, it didn't bother me. He hardly seemed like the same man. What do you mean? Well, he was different. Or maybe I was different. I knew him when I was 18, and I just remember him as being warmer. <laughs> I never saw Skyler Whitney's warmth. I just saw his arrogance. Well, this guy I knew had quite an ego. There's no doubt about that. He used to think that the sun rose and set for his benefit. But he could be nice. And he had a sense of humor. You know, I couldn't believe that he was capable of doing what he, what he did. Uh, Raven doesn't seem to be able to believe it either. She's still convinced that he's innocent. You almost have to admire her for that. Uh, it's late. I better be going. Oh, well, thank you for coming by. I really feel much better. It's all right. Look, if you hear any more suspicious sounds, don't you hesitate to call the police. All right. Don't worry about making a pest out of yourself. You just worry about being safe. Okay. Thanks again. Lock the door behind me, right? I will. Okay. Good night. Good night. Coming. 